First, we were taught to fear fats throughout the 80s and 90s because too much dietary fat was gonna make us fat and give us heart attacks. Then at the turn of the century, we were all diagnosed with carbophobia and have been told that carbs are going to make us fat and are the source of all disease. So it was only a matter of time before protein got its inquisition. And this time it stems from the claim that too much protein throughout your life is going to shorten your lifespan and decrease your chances of enhanced longevity. Where did this idea come from and is the evidence behind it strong enough or even relevant to humans? That's exactly what we're going to discuss in this video, so stay tuned, plus giveaway winners and another giveaway announced at the end of the video. There's been an abundance of research over the last few decades looking at how to not just extend our human lifespan and live longer than we currently are, but also how to extend our vitality, our functionality and vigor well into those extra years. While it's true that we humans are living significantly longer than we used to even just a century ago, we're not necessarily aging better. More of us are getting sick more often. And I'm not talking about the common cold or even the flu, but there's an increasing prevalence of multiple chronic diseases. A peer-reviewed research article done in 2011 by Hung and colleagues confirmed this by looking at survey data from 1998, 2004, and 2008 that included over 31,000 adults aged 65 and over. In this figure here, and I'll link the review down below so you can check it out for yourself, you can see that in 1998, only 13.1% of older Americans reported having zero chronic diseases. And just 10 years later, that number has gone down to 7.8%. According to this data, that's a 0.5% decrease each year of older Americans being disease-free. And if we continued that average trend of numbers, this data would put that number at 1.5% of older Americans having zero chronic diseases in the year 2020. That honestly kind of scares the shit out of me. I mean, just over 1% of older Americans being disease-free, that shows that we're not thriving any longer, but simply surviving longer. So since we've been successful at extending our lifespan, but not necessarily extending our health or our vitality, the term health span has become much more prevalent. It implies the preservation of health rather than merely extending a battle with disease. See, in my opinion, a main goal of successful aging is the maintenance of independence, being able to live independently in the community as an older person. And I'm sure that's something we can all agree on, right? Not just living a long time, getting by, barely keeping up, but living a long time with our youth, our soul, our happiness, our physical well being, and our vitality. So, with all that being said, do you want to know the single most effective tactic for increasing life expectancy and health that we know of to date? Calorie restriction. To date, calorie restriction remains the most robust dietary intervention in aging research. And because calorie restriction is so successful at promoting health and longevity in laboratory animals, there is increasing interest in the therapeutic potential for, calo for caloric restriction to extend, to extend lifespan in humans. Calorie restrictions longevity promoting effects are unsurprisingly based on preventing the disease promoting effects of the opposite overnutrition, consuming too much food all the time, which typically manifests as chronic pathologies such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, as well as cancer. Now, a more specialized version of calorie restriction is dietary restriction or DR, where one or more macronutrients are restricted with or without a change in, cal in calorie intake. And protein restriction or amino acid restriction has gained a lot of momentum in the alternative health community in the quest for increasing not just our lifespan, but as well as our health span. And this all started with a fungus called brewer's yeast. I used to take that as a supplement. It's gross as hell. It tastes absolutely horrible. But Ms. Ray et al. in this review from 2014 reported that protein plays the most important role in the effects of calorie and dietary restriction, and that it has the greatest impact on health and lifespan compared to carbs or fats. They showed this by restricting both glucose and amino acids extended the lifespan of yeast. Now, moving up in life form, restricting amino acids was also seen to extend the lifespan of flies and worms. Now, moving up in species once more, tryptophan and methionine, two uh, important amino acids, restricting those two has extended longevity in rodents. This seems to be done by decreasing the activation of IGF-1 and other TOR pathways. And this is what's most often referenced in this topic of conversation. So given the data that I just mentioned, you would think a solid conclusion would be, holy hell, all this protein is killing me.
which a lot of people are actually touting online. However, there are clear limitations and challenges to the research that supports protein restriction for longevity in humans. The obvious one is, well, we're humans. We're not a fungus, a fly, a worm, or a rat. I'm not shitting on animal models. They're great for creating hypotheses and other things, but to take those findings and run with it, making claims about the same thing happening in humans without really knowing that or having it ever even been tested is kind of silly. I remember hearing about all of this for the first time from a book I read a couple years ago titled The Longevity Code by Chris Verberg. In it, he clearly acknowledges the research on methionine in rodents. He states, Methionine is important because it is always the first amino acid which an amino acid chain, which ultimately forms protein, is built. Without methionine, protein building cannot get started. Various research studies have shown that methionine-restricted diets extended the lifespan of rodents. That said, I do not recommend that readers try eating fewer amino acids because the lack of amino acids can also be bad for your health. It will take many more years of research to find out what the ideal dose and duration of such dietary patterns is for humans. Now, his briefing on this topic sums all of this up pretty nicely and is a nice transition into the defense for adequate protein consumption and why I'm a fan of a high protein diet in combination with regular exercise and resistance training. For starters, let's point out that there are profound differences in macronutrient metabolism between rodents and humans. One example of this would be that humans do just fine with carbohydrate restriction and replacement by fats. Right, my keto friends? Some of us can do fine without any carbs at all. But in contrast, mice forced to undergo carbohydrate restriction or ketogenic diets develop non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and glucose intolerance. Another point in the defense of protein consumption is the substantial body of research we have on the clear benefits of having adequate to high protein in the diet. Uh, Professor Don Lehman, one of the world's, if not the world's expert on protein and amino acid metabolism, had some classic research done that showed consuming double the RDA of protein outperformed the RDA for improving body composition and blood lipid profile. Moreover, there have been recent meta-analyses confirming that higher protein intake maximizes muscular, <laughs> maximizes muscular adaptations to resistance training and working out, and also enhances fat loss while maintaining your lean tissue. Now, lean tissue isn't just the muscle that you have on your bicep, but as well as your organs and other things like that, bone density as well. Bro. All you said is that protein is good for building muscle. No shit, Sherlock, got some right here. What does that have to do with this fucking conversation? How is that relevant? Well, increasing muscle mass and decreasing fat mass, basically being relatively lean and muscular and maintaining your metabolic function has overlooked benefits. It's not just to look great and naked, but more importantly, for increasing our lifespan and our health span. Matter of fact, maintaining adequate strength and muscle is crucial for living a long, healthy life. First off, it's well established that skeletal muscle plays a crucial role in glucose transport, glucose homeostasis, insulin action, and a host of critical cardiometabolic functions. We need adequate muscle to improve these things and to get them working better for longer. Not only that, but there are three incredibly common syndromes that many older adults face in today's world, especially in Western societies. Frailty, sarcopenia, and sarcopenic obesity. Frailty, definitely an antagonist to successful aging and longevity. You can't live a successful independent life in your elder years if you're frail and fragile. Sarcopenia is an age-related degenerative loss of muscle mass, strength, and function. Loss of muscle strength and function is considered to be a major detriment of disability and mortality. See, if you can't move around or carry your groceries or lift your grandkids or even help, help yourself up or down a stepladder, that's no good because then you're more likely to fall over and not be able to help yourself up. You're more likely to lose your balance. You'd be more sedentary if it's hard for you to walk around, which then puts you in a negative feedback loop and it's just not good after that. The less muscle you have for your body and the more fat you have at any age puts you at risk for a life of disease. And having that at an old age is not an ideal place to end up when we're 75. See, a reason these things happen as we age is due to the fact that our bodies get less efficient at handling protein as we get older. 
So what we've learned is that as we get older, our bodies become less efficient handling protein, maybe because of blood flow, maybe because of signaling differences, maybe because of membrane transport, but for whatever reason, uh, we become less efficient. And we can, we can help that efficiency with exercise, and, but we can also help it with just more protein. Luckily, all of this is directly treatable and preventable with proper nutrition and training. Do you see how having a healthy, able, strong body is important for how long you live and your quality of life? And do you see how adequate protein consumption and exercise plays a key role in this? Why avoid amino acids if it can give us these many benefits with the lack of research behind it uh, decreasing longevity? Now, it's not sexy, I know. The main take home point of this video is basically eat right and exercise. And I know that sounds boring as hell and it's not what you wanna hear, but here's the thing. It works, it's what needs to be done. There's no hack, there's no supplement, there's no quick fix, there's no book you can read to give you the secret. It takes consistent work. Trust me though, once you get started, build yourself a nice routine for your life and you start seeing improvements and steps towards your goals, you'll be so excited to keep going and you'll realize how simple it really is. See, as someone who grew up fat and then became skinny fat and now feels comfortable flexing without a shirt on for thousands of people to see on the internet, it's possible and it's damn well worth it. And this applies to you who are older as well. See, age is just a number and you can get started at any time. And I bet most of you are thinking, well, that's easy for you to say you're in your 20s. See, the thing is though, the amount of seasoned men and women I see online and even in my own local gym getting started with resistance training in their elder years is inspiring beyond belief. I see this man at the gym every week. He does his stretches and he slowly but surely makes his way around the gym doing his routine every single time I see him. That right there is amazing to see. He's not making excuses and he's doing what he needs to do to take care of himself and to continue aging well. In closing, the evidence that protein and amino acid restriction for enhanced longevity in humans is relatively weak and hypothetical compared to the clear benefits we've seen in the substantial amount of research we have for having adequate to high protein in the diet, even up to double the current RDA. There was even a review done by Dr. Longo and other all-star longevity researchers that state there's a lack of human studies looking at the potential benefits of protein or amino acid restriction on the aging process. A quote from the review says, however, the duration and severity of the DR regimen that is required for optimal benefits is not feasible for most people and is likely to be associated with undesirable side effects. So then what is the best range of protein intake to optimize our health, which could in turn optimize our longevity? That's anywhere from 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day, even upwards of 2.4 grams of protein per kilogram per day. That's according to data from Don Lehman, as well as Stuart Phillips, also a world-renowned expert on protein, muscle, and nutrition for optimizing human health. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my references linked in the description below, along with some incredible keynotes and interviews from these two gentlemen who are quite literally the uh, two of the world's top experts and researchers on this topic. Also wanna give a big shout out to Alan Aragon and his research review uh, for providing me with the base of research on this topic. His research review is where I personally get a host of unbiased scientific data that I use uh, to help me make my videos almost all the time. And keep in mind, this is what the scientific consensus has to say about this topic up to this current date, up to the year 2020. If new research comes out over the next few years saying otherwise or challenging this idea, then obviously I'm gonna be open about that. I'm gonna be open to changing my approach if that says otherwise, and I'll continue to update you guys as these things progress, as you guys follow me on this journey. So with that being said, let me go ahead and announce two giveaway winners for my last video. I mentioned I would be giving away two bags of Purity Coffee. This is the best damn coffee ever. I literally have a pitch of it, a picture of it every single day. I have a cup of it right there. 
Uh, it's the best coffee ever that I've ever tried. No sponsorship, no affiliation. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick two random people when I'm done filming. I'm gonna put your names right here. So congratulations to you two. I'll reach out to you to get your details and I'll send you each a bag of Purity Coffee. Another giveaway is happening right now and to participate in this all you have to do is like the video make sure you're subscribed to the channel and give me a genuine comment down below not some random bullshit but maybe something about you know whatever we talked about today or something about your your journey any comment as long as it's genuine i don't care what it is um, it could even be hate all comments are entered into this giveaway and what i'm giving away next is a pair of blue blockers if you've been following me you know these have upgraded my sleep consistently over the last few years. Blocking blue light at night as the sun goes down has been key for me performing very high and getting the best sleep that I can. If you've been following the channel, you know I always talk about these. So these are from True Dark. I'm paying out of pocket for this. This is no sponsorship. So like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. And in my next video, I'll be announcing the winner of a brand new pair of really good quality blue blockers. I've had the same pair for a couple years. I've dropped it, I've scratched it. It doesn't even scratch, it's in really good quality. Uh, so that's going out to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get our asses to the gym and have a nice steak.